Assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to asp.net tutorial in, in today's class I'm gonna tell you about the cache and what is cache and how can we deal with the cache memory okay uh, let me first tell you what is cache memory uh, you might have heard this name uh, with respect to the hardware and with respect to the different softwares also and with respect to the web browsers when you are doing the browsing the stuff on your internet right so basically cache is the temporary storage where you can store your data uh, for a temporary period for a specific time period okay so uh, in today's lecture I'm gonna demonstrate how can you do or work with your particular ASP.NET application and how can you handle uh, your data in the cache of ASP.NET application okay so why we need here in, in this particular domain why we need cache the first question is this let me give you an example let's say uh, you are creating a live score website and on that live score website one person is coming and asking for the live score okay and then uh, the website requests the database and fetch the data from the database and then uh, display it on the browser that's the one request and response likewise when another user comment on that website then another request and re response will take place likewise if 10,000 people come on that website then 10,000 requests and response to the database will come into the context so I wanted to reduce this amount let's say so everybody that are coming on that website are asking for the single similar data the live score of a particular match and and it is unique throughout the throughout the match and and and, and it is uh, useful uh, for every uh, particular user that is coming on the website the same record i hope it is clear to everyone the same record is useful for everybody it is uh, not duplication but everybody is asking for the live score only so that's a give, that's a particular example and now how to reduce that how to reduce that response and request by using this cache so how can we do that uh, we first implement the cache and we store the data inside the cache when the first time uh, we fetch the data from the database when the data is fetched from the database for the first time we store it inside the cache and then the subsequent request will uh, get the data from the cache instead of getting from the database I hope it is clear to everyone now uh, after getting the data from the cache it will be displayed to every user that are coming after the first user okay and now and then we set the time period uh, let's say if we set the time period for 10 minutes to expire for that particular cache so for 10 minutes you will avoid the request and response of that particular database or uh, data from the database okay instead the data will be fetched from the cache and after 10 minutes the cache will expire or it will be flushed out and then uh, the, the when the new request will come into the context then the data will be again fetched from the database and then again stored for 10 minutes inside the cache so that's what the concept I'm going to demonstrate today uh, in today's lecture so let's start have a look how can we do that all right so uh, I have created an, a page with the name cache example and this is the back end of this uh, the first thing that I have to do is to call the stored procedure sorry uh, the connection string from my main class in the previous uh, some lectures I have created this main class and inside this main class I have created this connection so let me show you if somebody uh, is new here so he or she can see that uh, how can you create a connection uh, uh, for connecting it to your database so I have called my connection string from my web.config file so let me show you my web.config file also and here you can notice that I have added my connection string okay so this is the all connection string if you can uh, see it completely now okay so here you have to first add your connection string the data source the PC where your database is residing or the IP address where the where uh, wherever your database is and then uh, the database name what is the database name and then the user ID and then the password if you are using the SQL server authentication and if you are using Windows authentication then you don't need the username and password instead you will write integrated security equals to true that's it instead of user ID and password for Windows authentication but for SQL authentication you need user ID and password so that was a bit about the connection string now uh, I have called that connection string via this code configuration manager if you don't want if you don't want uh, if you don't found this uh, configuration manager class so go to your references and add this configuration manager class if you don't found it in the IntelliSense and then via this class I'm calling my connect connection string because the name of my connection string is connect and it is then stored inside my string s and then I have created a public static SQL connection a global connection that can uh, access my connection string so from this class I am accessing my connection string I hope it is clear to everyone now what I can do uh, I am creating an SQL command let's say so I don't have SQL command here no problem just write it SQL command and then press control dot 
and you can see you the reference is appearing using system dot data dot SQL client and one more reference you have to add that is this one using system dot data now it's fine so SQL command CMD equal to new SQL command and here you have to write your procedure so uh, let me open SQL and pick some pick up some procedure okay uh, first I will complete the code so main class dot connection first of all you have set it the SQL command and then CMD dot command type is equals to command type dot stored procedure because I'm using a stored procedure here and then what you can do SQL data adapter DA is equals to new SQL data adapter and here you can pass your command and then what you can do data table DT equals to new data table and then you have to fill your data from data adapter to your data table and why I am doing this because uh, the data that you wanted to display on any control requires a data table or a data set control uh, class sorry uh, so data adapter will not be directly passed to the data source I hope it is clear to everyone so that's why I have picked up the data from data adapter to a data table or you can use a data set let me tell you the difference between the data table and the data set data table and data set is quite different in uh, in uh, working fashion okay how can uh, how can they are different uh, data table can store only one table and data set can store multiple tables in it okay so you can store multiple data tables inside the data set object uh, on different indexes but you can store one table only in a data table object I hope it is clear to everyone now uh, after doing this let's say you wanted to display the data on a grid view so wh what I can do I can pick up a grid view here toolbox and let's select a grid view now I wanted to display data on this grid so grid view one dot data source so data source the data source should be DT because your data is coming from the database in this so let me open SQL first so guys I have this stored procedure created already inside my example DB database and when I execute this query I am getting this some some records from this table okay so I wanted to got I wanted to call the records on my uh, grid view so I am copying this stored procedure and I will paste this stored procedure at this place so my query is here it is a stored procedure and it will be executed by the data adopter and then the data will be uh, fetched inside the data adopter and then it will be fetched into it will be stored inside a data table and then the data bill data table will be passed to the grid view I hope it is clear to everyone and now what I am doing I am doing the data bind operation With, uh, without this uh, there is no data so data bind okay so that's the mandatory code now uh, the the lecture of today is about cache so where is cache I don't write uh, there is no cache right now so how can you implement cache let me tell you how so the first thing that you can do here is to check whether the data exists in the cache or not okay so how can you do that just come here and write if page dot is post back if the page is not post back then do this okay else if the page is post back then do something else so if the page is not post back that means the page is opening for the first time so when the page is open for the first time what you can do you can create a cache object so cache of look it is asking you enter the key you can store the data inside a cache with, re with respect to key and value okay you can use this way and you can use this way also cache dot insert and it will ask you the same key and the value I hope it is clear to everyone and then the next thing the dependencies the time uh, absolute expiration time the sliding expiration time and then there are, there are other uh, overloaded versions of this particular insert method so whatever if you wish to uh, uh, specify the time then you have to use this insert uh, method for expiry time now so cache dot insert and what you wanted to insert uh, I wanted to insert let's say my customers that's the name key I have and I have specified a key and now the what's the value so I am storing my data table inside this cache okay and then my data table is locally created so I am making it a global data table so data table DT is equals to null by default and when the page is loaded uh, it should not be like this now it's fine so data table 
equals to new data table i have split it into two okay so i have made it global now uh, what i have done i have uh, stored my data inside the data table and i have passed my dt as a data to my cache and then uh, the dependency i don't have any dependency so right here null and then it is asking you the time so the time should be date time dot now the current time dot add minutes let's say one minute okay so whatever the time will be uh, one minute will be added that means the cache will hold the data for one minute and after one minute if you ask the same data the data will be uh, vanished okay and then uh, the sliding experience time look the definition is written on, uh, in the bottom of, of this description uh, the interval between the time the inserted object is last exist and at and the time at which the object expires if this value is equivalent to of 20 minutes the object will expire and be removed from the cache 20 minutes after it was last last exist exist so it will if you specify some time here then 20 minutes will be the default time okay the sliding expiration time if you are using sliding expiration the absolute parameter must be no absolute expiration it is saying that if you are using this one then it's okay if you are using that one the sliding expiration then absolute you should not give the absolute one i hope it is clear to everyone so uh, you can use any of the two and then semicolon okay now one parameter that should be here is time span so what you can do you can write here let me tell you like this zero uh, no uh, you can do like this time span ts equals to new time span and give here let's say zero okay and then pass here ts because it is asking the required data type so i have passed the sliding experience uh, expiration time to zero and then now what you can do you can run this program so when the post uh, when the page will run for the first time what will happen the data will be fetched and then it will be uh, displayed to the data uh, grid view and then it will it will also be inserted inside the cache and now if the if the page is pushed back that means if the page is reloaded then what will happen you will check if cache of and then specify the name of the cache that is my customer cache dot my customer is not equals to null then come inside okay then come inside and what you can do data table dt equals to new data table okay give some other name because dt is the global parameter here there and then start the uh, constructor and then you can specify the data source so grid view one dot data source uh, so where is data source it's downwards yes data source is equals to dtt i hope it is clear to everyone this time what i have done i have created a data table and then i have assigned a data table but where should uh, the data come from inside this data table so you have to pick up your cache so cache of my customers okay cache of my customer and then dot um, you can uh, apply semicolon and one more thing that you can specify is right so uh, I got a new way uh, you can do like this also if you copy this and paste it here then that's the same because it's a data source the data is coming from there and it can be displayed and now the last thing is this copy and paste okay and now what i can do i can come on my page and i am placing a button so that the post back action will be happened so button okay so when i click this button nothing will happen but the page will be posted back okay so the when when the post back will, will occur this else should happen and if the data is stored in the cache then the data will still display on the grid okay so let's start and have a look what is the result okay my page is now loaded for the first time when i click the button look the data is still there and it is now coming from the cache though it is not giving you an impact or doesn't is uh, nothing is changed in front of you but the data is coming from the uh, cache so after one click it should uh, after one minute uh, the cache will expire okay and when uh, after after uh, after one minute when you click the uh, button again uh, no data will be displayed okay so uh, you can check that also all right guys so look uh, one minute is passed and when i have checked it so now 
Oh, what will happen? Let us debug it and see. Look, the if is not working because the cache is cleared after one minute. So I hope it is clear to everyone. So that's all for today. Hope you have understood what is the concept of cache and how it works. So you can do in your ASP.NET application also. So if you do not understand anything, please write me. Thank you so much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.